It is a glorious day. YouTube paid me. This is like adulting 101. Yes, I am gonna lecture you. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Cheryl. If you're new, welcome to the C Squad. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again. I'm super excited for today's video. I am going to be sharing how I budget and save my money. So I actually started budgeting very recently. So this is going to be like a beginner's guide to budgeting. I'm going to walk you guys through why I started budgeting in the first place, how I opened my savings account. I will also show you my simple budget spreadsheet, which will be linked down below below completely free and also at the end you will budget with me for the month of November I won't go through every single transaction step by step but I will share a few of my incomes and expenses and the actual prices in pounds before we get into it please like this video and subscribe to my channel it really helps me so much and also comment down below green hearts or like money emojis or anything like that if you want to see more of these in the future I'm super open to doing like budget with me's every Every single month like in January you'll budget with me for December and that kind of stuff so if you guys are into that then comment down below and I will make it happen so as I mentioned before, I recently started budgeting. I never budgeted in uni, I just would kind of wing it and it always like worked out. And I think it's because I didn't have a lot of disposable income. So my spending habits were way less than they are now. And I noticed when I started my job, because I was getting more money than I typically do, I started to kind of feel like I was a baller and I wanted to like buy all of these things. I don't know if you guys have heard of a phenomenon called life lifestyle creep or lifestyle inflation. Basically, it happens when an increase in your income leads to an increase in frivolous spending. I mentioned this time and time again on my channel, but I have a shopping addiction and genuinely, it's because I'm bored. I don't leave the house and so I just end up buying stuff to just kind of, I don't know, make my life a bit more exciting. So I'll buy new clothes so that I can have Instagram photo shoots or I'll buy makeup so that I can sit and just like do my makeup. Or one time I even bought an adult coloring book and like some colored pencils which I haven't used in a while I don't know if that was like my wisest purchase I mean if you guys want me to do a video about the dumbest purchases I made in 2021 or just so far in my life I can definitely do that So I knew if I kept all of my money in my current account I would spend it all Literally I knew I was gonna spend it all and start like balling out and I just didn't want that to happen So that's why I opened a savings account I didn't have a specific goal like buying a certain product or making a certain purchase I just wanted to move the money so that I wouldn't touch it so I applied for a savings account on the 8th of July, which was two days after I started my part-time job. The process was super quick and easy. I just applied online and I got approved for my account the next day. Obviously this process will be different for every bank, but in my case, it was really simple and easy to do. So my bank had a lot of different savings account options, but I just ended up choosing the simplest one so that I could get the ball rolling quickly. So I got an account that had no minimum opening deposit and that had instant and flexible access. I didn't want an account that would limit me from accessing that money for a period of time. I also wanted something that was going to be just faster in terms of the application process and the response time. The only downside to the option I went with is that my interest rate is very low. It is 0.01%. Essentially, my money is just sitting in a bank account and it's not actually growing so at the time I just wanted to get everything set up quickly but definitely in the future I'll be looking at some better options that I can put my money into so that it actually generates more money over time my bank offers cash ISAs and stocks and shares ISAs I am NOT an expert in investing or shares or anything like that I am NOT even a beginner I know very little about it but if I ever do start getting into that I will definitely make an update video for you guys 
So there are a lot of different budgeting methods out there. One of the methods I came across was the 50-30-20 rule. Essentially, 50% of your income goes towards your needs, which would be like your rent, your grocery bill, your electricity and water, your transport, the kind of things that you basically can't live without. Then 30% of your income goes towards your wants. Now this is dining out or shopping for clothes or going on holiday. Then the remaining 20% goes towards savings or paying off debt. I live with my parents so my basic needs like rent and groceries is covered by them so I didn't need to budget out money for that. So I actually completely adjusted the budget to suit my lifestyle. So I recommend doing that because everything doesn't work for everyone and their particular life situation. So for me, my expenses are primarily wants. So I need to sustain my shopping addiction so this includes clothes makeup also any YouTube equipment or software I need to keep producing these videos buying any additional food outside of groceries for myself so that could be a Starbucks Frappuccino or sushi or anything like that I also get my nails done every month so because of my lifestyle I completely readjusted the 50 30 20 rule to suit me I did this by looking at at previous months like May and June to see what my typical spending habits were like. So at the time, I found that I spent about 20% of my income on clothes shopping and makeup, etc. And that I spent 10% of my income on food outside of the groceries in my house. There were also just general miscellaneous expenses, including my phone bill, my bank fees, my nail appointments, transport, going out with friends to the movies, or for dinner so I will walk you through all of that stuff in the budget with me portion so the miscellaneous items make up 20% of my income and then with the remaining 50% I put that all in my savings account since I don't have any responsibilities outside of taking care of myself I wanted to put a large portion of my money into my savings so as I mentioned before this ratio of spending is going to be different for everybody and their lifestyle so it just go through your bank statements from previous months, see how much you typically spend on things, see if you're overspending and from there you can decide what areas of your life you can cut down on. I can see from my analytics that a lot of you are younger than me so in this segment I'm just going to give you some big sis advice on the importance of budgeting yes I am gonna lecture you okay firstly budgeting will help you to stop overspending I'm gonna be Captain Obvious here but you don't want to spend all of your money before the end of the month and then you're left starving for the next one or two weeks while you wait for your next paycheck that is not ideal you want to have enough money to sustain yourself until your next paycheck. You also don't want to get caught up in the lifestyle creep or inflation and spending money just because you can. Take it from me, I think this year I have really over consumed material items. Like I moved here a year ago and I don't even have space for my clothing. Like this is actually a problem. My makeup collection is like getting huge and my drawers are taken up and it's not good for your bank account. This is also something I'm going to try and do less of in 2022. Buying stuff in the moment is great but I promise you the novelty wears off after like a day or two. Secondly, you never know when an unforeseen expense will pop up. For example, a few months ago my mom randomly had a toothache and when she went to the dentist she ended up incurring a lot of expenses that she hadn't planned on and if she didn't have money in her savings account that would have been a huge problem so you really never know you could end up having to travel somewhere unexpectedly or to have to buy a textbook or have to get a tutor for a course that you thought you would be fine in so you need to have money put aside for a rainy day thirdly every pound rand penny counts a lot of people don't do the whole savings thing because they think oh what's the point if I'm only gonna be saving 
doing 200 rand every month. Something is better than nothing. Right now, my money is sitting in a low interest savings account and while that's not ideal, at least I got it out of the way because if I waited until I learned how to invest or until I had more income to put into a savings account, I would have probably spent that money already. So you gotta start small and start with anything you have left over, even if it's 50 pounds. Actually, 50 pounds is a lot. But just start with something. No amount is too small. Lastly, if you are living at home with your parents and you don't have any responsibilities outside of taking care of yourself, I would highly recommend to start budgeting and saving money now. It really is the perfect time because you have disposable income and you don't have any important expenses like rent and groceries, property tax, so you can really save up for the future. Now I'm gonna take you guys through my simple budget spreadsheet. It's really not anything fancy, so don't come for me, but it's just something for beginners just to get you started so that it's not like this whole mammoth task. I've seen some really insane budget videos with like huge Excel spreadsheets and that is just like very stressful for me. So I prefer just to have something simple so that it's not a daunting task to do my budget every month. I have linked this template in the description box. It is a Google Sheet, so all you need to do is have a Google account and then you can access it there. If you use Microsoft Excel, you can open it up in Google Sheets, press file, and then download and you can download it as an Excel. Also, in this video, I'm not going to be going super in-depth on how to use Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing, so literally Google is your friend. There are a lot of YouTube videos as well taking you through different things, so if you don't know how to perform calculations or add or delete rows or duplicate sheets or anything like that, then I highly recommend looking up some YouTube videos or some online material. So here we have my budget template. It is a very simple, as I said before. Here we have your income, your expenses, savings and investments, and then your final balance. Your source of income may be different depending on your situation. So I've got here allowance and part-time work, which you can add and and delete rows as you wish. Then in expenses, we've got different categories, rent, groceries, transport, shopping, and miscellaneous. Once again, you can add or remove or change as you see fit. Then under savings, we've got different accounts, savings, and we have cash ISAs, which you can do research about if you are interested in going down that route. So in this column, we have planned. So essentially what I do with my budget is at the end of the month, after I've done that month's budget, I will then plan out my budget for the next month depending on changes that may happen so if I know I'm going on a weekend trip somewhere the next month then I'm going to budget for that for example next month I won't be receiving a paycheck from my job since that ended so I have to readjust my spending accordingly so here's where you plan what you think you're going to earn in terms of income what you think you're going to spend with expenses and how much you plan on putting into your savings account then here you have the actual values. This comes in when you are logging in all of your bank transactions and then here we have the difference which I mean it's pretty simple. It's just what you planned on getting versus what you actually got. So if we just like fill out a little example run, I'm gonna do this in pounds. Let's say you planned on getting a hundred pounds allowance and you actually got 120 pounds. So essentially what this will do is it will show you that you ended up making 20 pounds extra than you anticipated. If from part-time work you were expecting 500 pounds and then you ended up receiving 485, that will show that you actually earned less than you initially expected. It's very simple conditional formatting that I've done, which once again, you can look up a tutorial for. I like this because it just simplifies everything like you can see hey were my amounts right did I spend more on shopping let's say I said I was gonna spend 50 on shopping and then I ended up spending 200 so obviously that's not ideal because you spent 150 more pounds than you had anticipated but if your groceries you thought you were gonna spend 100 pounds on groceries and then you ended up spending 60 well that's good because you saved 40 and obviously here you have your totals for everything for me what I do with my savings 
use is I will write in a formula which once again if you need help with that you can check online but I will just say I want 50% of my whole income to go into my savings copy this over so here we'll see that I'm planning on putting more in my savings account because my income ended up being more so it just shows you the final balance that you're left with and whether you're left with more money than you initially anticipated to be left with or whether you're left with less so it just kind of allows you at a quick glance to view things if we just go here we'll put miscellaneous if I have bank fees that are two pounds then I'm gonna add 750 for a frappuccino I don't know then we can add 11 pounds for your phone bill so that's how I add up my miscellaneous obviously if you're like a more detailed person you can open up a separate sheet or you can break it down further for me I don't need all the intricacies I just need to know how much was miscellaneous so that's how I do it if your amounts stay the same then this is what it will show you so I'm just kind of hoping that this will simplify everything for you so that you can see everything at a quick glance if I ever do make it more advanced I will update you guys and also share that template I have also left out currencies because we are all in different parts of the world at least based on my YouTube analytics so obviously I do this in pounds you can just change the currency by going here so that's what I would essentially do so yeah it's a very simple template if you guys have any questions on it you can just comment down below and I will be happy to help if it's anything like how to do for formula or how to duplicate sheets or all of that there's so many different resources if i remember hi editing cheryl then i'll link some videos for you guys to watch if you need help with that but otherwise that is how i do it it is very simple and now we're gonna start my favorite part i love watching these when other youtubers do it we are going to go through my november spending and we're gonna plan what i should be spending for december so I typically do my budget for the previous month at the beginning of the next month. So for example, I will go through all of my transactions for November at the beginning of December, like December 2nd or 3rd, so that any pending transactions have fully gone through. Full disclosure, it is the 18th of December and I'm only doing my November budget now and that's because I really wanted to film this video for you guys. So I just kind of had to find a time to slot it in and this is where we landed. So it is much later than usual, but I know do it at the beginning of the month and then as I said before after I log my income and expenses for the current month I will then estimate my income and expenses for the next month step number one is to log into your online banking and download your bank transactions for that month if you don't already have online banking I definitely recommend you sign up because it just makes everything so much easier in terms of payments and getting information and transactions it's just a lifesaver so definitely do that so I adjusted the template because my incomes and expenses are a little bit different so I have multiple streams of income at the moment I do get an allowance still for my lovely parents love you guys I obviously have my part-time job I make a minuscule amount of money from YouTube and that's about it for now so I have a few there and then for expenses I've got my categories as shopping food maintenance which is like me doing my nails hair stuff like that going out and miscellaneous and and then I just have a savings account because I don't have an ISA. ISA? I don't have a cash ISA at the moment or any other investment. So I've downloaded my transactions. Typically, I download it as a PDF. You can download it as an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you want, depending on who you're banking with. So I won't go through everything with you guys, but I will give you little tidbits here and there. If you guys don't know, I went to Manchester at the end of October, and my first transaction for November is actually a mint frostino that I got from pasta i'm obsessed with it that was five pounds which i don't know how worth it it was no it was worth it then i got my monthly allowance from my parents i have a payment that i don't know sometimes this happens where i have a payment that i don't remember and it doesn't help that it's been like a month and a half i have like a google cloud payment i have a feeling it was something to do with youtube pretty sure i probably bought some software or something that i just can't remember so i'm just gonna put that under miscellaneous So 
what I have done the first week of November. I'm realizing I have issues. I think by the time this video goes up, you would have already seen another video where I show you guys my frame that I got for my degree. Obviously, that was an unexpected expense. So I spent like 22 pounds on that frame for my degree. We have a few Just Eat transactions and I'm realizing that I need to stop ordering Just Eat because they're way too many. Then I also bought this cool little graphic for my YouTube channel. Yeah, that cost £9.35p. So guys, support your girl. Watch the ads. Help me out because I actually spend a lot of money just on YouTube stuff. Then we have a payment to get my nails done. What can I say? My nails, my nails are 30 pounds, guys. Shh. Just let me be. I never leave my house. Like this is like my one self-care thing, okay? And look at them. They are so cute. This happens sometimes where I'm looking through my transactions and I don't recognize one. And I used Apple Pay and I don't remember. I have no idea what that was for. Yes. I remember now. Okay, there's an error on my graduation photos. So I went to the post office to rectify that. That is what the transaction is for. It's like tiny little things like that where you don't even remember. Then I had another mint frostino on the 17th of November. Great, love that for me. I mean, I loved it in the moment, but now I'm second guessing if it was worth it. See, this is a good thing about budgeting. You start to realize like other things that I'm buying completely necessary or is it just instant gratification. Then I did a little shopping on Beauty Bay. I love buying makeup and sitting in my room and like just doing it like I have nothing else to do on a Friday night I don't like you know party anymore so I sit on my floor of my room and I do my makeup now I am not mad at this purchase I think it was a hundred percent worth every single penny look at that how gorgeous it's the age of opulence palette from beauty bay so yeah I bought that and I think I bought a few other things Oh yeah, I also bought the Urban Decay All Nighter. I think that was worth it. I'm pretty happy with my purchase there. At least it lasts longer than a mint frostino, so. And if you guys, which video would I have mentioned it in? I think my Manchester vlog. I was supposed to go out for Halloween, bought my costume and everything. And then I injured my ankle while I was playing tennis with my brother and I literally could not walk on it. So I ended up not going out, which was great because I got to return all that stuff. So I have a few credits from Pretty Little Things. So thank you very much. It is a glorious day. You know why? Because YouTube paid me. Oh my gosh. I love this. I love this. It happens once in a blue moon. So I get very excited. So I got 34 pounds and 40 P from YouTube in November. Love that for me. Now here's the kicker. A lot of people think that, you know, I make a lot of money from YouTube or whatever. The last time I received a payment was... August. August was the last time. So that would be September, October. It's only November. That's like about 30 pounds a month. And if I was getting 30 pounds, I mean, that doesn't even cover the cost of anything really. So it's nice to get because it doesn't come out every month. You have to reach a certain threshold. So you have to reach 60 pounds in order for Google to pay you out. So a lot of the time I don't meet that threshold and therefore cannot be paid. So guys, if you want to support the channel so that I can buy more equipment, for YouTube and like dedicate more time to it. Watching ads is a really good way to support me. Also, what I'm doing when I'm going through these transactions is I'm also checking the purchases. I am going through my emails to see exactly what I was buying when I was ordering food, exactly what I was buying when I was ordering from Amazon, just to kind of see whether the stuff I was buying was completely necessary or not. Also, if you guys are curious about how YouTube paychecks work and like how you actually make money on a YouTube I am open to doing a video on that. I think it could actually be pretty fun and I could like share how much I was paid the first time I got my paycheck and all that stuff. So, I mean, it could be fun. Comment down below and let me know. So, I bought a laptop stand on Amazon because my laptop fan is being a nightmare. So, that was one of the purchases I made this month. I also have my Vodafone bill, which is about 13 pounds every month. Also love that. I have bank fees, which are one pound. 
So I'm not gonna lie, it's extremely tedious to go line by line and look at all your transactions and cross-reference them with the different sites you're ordering on, if it's Beauty Bay or Amazon or Uber Eats or whatever. But it's really good to like see exactly what you're spending money on because it does make you rethink a lot of decisions that you maybe have made. There's some situations where I pay for food on my card, but my parents are actually the ones that are like buying it for me. So my dad I bought my brother sushi and they went out for sushi and then when he came back he said you can order something and then you can charge me for it for the next month I don't know if that makes any sense but yeah if I put something on my card that he was initially gonna pay for then I get my money back also good news for me because this month was a mess I had been overtaxed I do not make nearly enough money to be paying taxes <laughs> I ended up getting on the phone with the tax company and everything they sorted all of that out and I actually got a tax refund so I got all my money back that had been taxed plus my money from my part-time job So I actually got a lot more income than I initially expected so that has balanced things out <sighs> Let me give you an overview of what's happening what I'm seeing over here and the adjustments that I'm then gonna make Well that I should have made for this month, but you know, it's halfway through the month I can salvage it. I can be better So for starters, I didn't actually end up shopping as much as I thought I would so that's great I saved money. However, I spent about three times the amount of money I was expecting to spend on food but to be honest that's because I lowered my food budget to less than half of what it would usually be so that was a fumble on my part I didn't go out to the movies or to dinner or anything so all the money I had budgeted for going out and hanging out with friends I didn't end up spending so that's great and then I bought a lot more miscellaneous stuff but it's not too far out of the budget that I'm like concerned about it it's like 20 pounds outside the budget so now with my actual income I'm going to put 50% of that into my savings account. So let's say I had planned for that month to make uh, Let's say I planned for the month that my income was going to be a hundred pounds from my YouTube AdSense And I was going to save 50% of that. So 50 pounds. If I then get 200 pounds from YouTube I'm not going to save 50. I'm still going to save 50% of that income So I'm going to save a hundred pounds if you get what I mean So I don't save less because I made more like I still save 50% of my income. That's a strategy that's just been working for me. So if I didn't get my tax refund, things would be shaky over here but things ended up actually looking a lot better but I cannot rely on that happening because as I said before, my job and I, we are done. So now what I do is I plan for the next month. So I just duplicate the spreadsheet. I'll save one spreadsheet as November 2021 and then save the next one as December 2021. So part-time work and I are done. I could be wrong, but I think I'm still getting one more paycheck from the work that I did in November. Uh, I'm gonna put what I think I'm getting from that last paycheck. If I don't end up getting that paycheck, I'm gonna be really sad. I still get the same monthly allowance. YouTube, I'm expecting to get nothing. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I could actually check, but I haven't been great with posting, so I wouldn't expect to get another paycheck. Yeah, that's definitely not happening. I haven't met the threshold, so I'm gonna put zero for YouTube. And then as we discussed, I'm going to get money back from my dad that I can add as an income. Okay, so here's what's really fun, which is like me being sarcastic. I would say probably 80% of my income was coming from my part-time job. So now that that's going, the budget is going to have to go way, 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 way down. And I think the first place I'm going to start with, and this is where you should cut down if you notice that you're overspending, food. Yeah, me ordering out. That needs to go down a chunk. Shopping, I'm gonna take down because I don't think I actually shop as much as I think I do. Although I do recall shopping a bit this month, but it's fine. Going out, I don't leave my house. So I'm gonna put zero. I don't think I'm gonna leave the house. I'm not planning on. So we're at a deficit. I have been toying with the idea of reducing my savings. So maybe instead of 50%, I could take it down to 40 or 30, which I think just makes sense because there's no money that's coming in. So for me to like expect myself to never shop again or to never order out again, like I don't think that's going to work. I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do now, before I forget, I am going to move 
my money from my current account to my savings account. Once again, online banking makes transferring from different accounts so much easier. So if you don't have online banking, then I would highly recommend because all I have to do is do like one quick little like type in the amount and then send and it moves to my savings. This is like adulting 101. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I certainly did. I feel like I can hold myself accountable with you guys to actually keep on track with the way I'm spending. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely comment down below if you want to see monthly budget with me. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to join the C-Squad and hit that notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!